Hey guys, Doug B here, your average axe-wielding hack. When I was wrapping up my interview with Austin Buddy, he suggested that I do a video on the gate block. Now, why would you need to use the gate block? Well, let's see what Anderton's site says about using a gate. Noise gates are particularly popular among the high gain crowd. Modern metal, gent, prog rock. These artists tend to combine loud, distorted sounds with lots of space. The perfect storm when it comes to rig noise. Some people can live with the noise, and some purists think it's old school, but for most of us, we just want to do everything we can to reduce hum. So what causes unwanted noise? The type of amp being used, amount of volume and gain, EQ settings, types of pickups, AC supply and interference, and radio and static interference. There are three main controls that you'll most often encounter on a noise gate pedal. Threshold. This control determines when the gate opens and closes, dependent on the signal that's going through it. Decay slash release. This controls the amount of time before the gate closes after being open. Reduction. This determines the amount that the gated signal is reduced by, as the term might suggest. Now, as you've probably already guessed, I'm not particularly into modern metal, extreme amounts of gain, or extremely fast and precise playing. Uh, that's because I can't play fast and precise. I can barely play slow and precise. But hey, single coil pickups also make a lot of noise, right? Even with a mid-gain amp, you can still get a ton of noise when using a guitar equipped with single coils. You have to find the right spot to stand at and the right angle too, especially if you're recording. A good studio will have gates available to put in the signal path to clean up unnecessary noise. But what about playing out live, or even home players? Many would buy a noise gate pedal or a rack mount unit, but we don't have to bother with any of that. Now, somebody could say that there's also a gate in the input block, and they would be correct. But for this video, we're only going to be talking about the gate slash expander block. Now, the gate slash expander block is fairly well represented in the factory presets. Just going through bank A, I found these nine. 36, FAS Modern, 37, Das Metal, 52, Spawn Nitrous, 56, Ma, the Meatloaf, 63, 6160s, 65, Spawn Q-Rod OD2, 102, De Gentlemanly, 103, Leon's De Gent Bass, and 108, Limelight Matte. Our gate expander block has three types. Classic gate. Based on the classic noise gate where the gate opens when the threshold value is exceeded and decays to the attenuation value when below the threshold value and the hold time has expired. This type offers harder gating and is useful for aggressive styles. Downward expander. It has less chatter and tighter gating than the classic gate. Modern gate. Similar to the classic gate, except the gate opens in a constant, linear, in dB manner. This naturally makes the attack slower as the gate first opens and can be used for both traditional gating and for special effects like audio swells. Other parameters include threshold, attack time, hold time, release time, low cut, high cut, side chain source, level, and balance. I put together a preset with four scenes. One using no gate, plus the three different gate types. The preset has looper, gate, drive, amp, and cab. Each gate type gets its own scene, plus the no gate scene. Now, the one thing that I found interesting is that the placement of the gate block is not where it seems obvious. Of course you would place it before any time-based effects, but I left those off with this preset. First I tried it at the very end of the chain, with interesting results. This is one high gain preset. Griddle kick drive into the DOS metal amp into a Recto 4x12 cab. That's noisy even with no guitar in the signal path. I'm also using my Silver Sky which has single coil pickups. Guaranteed noisy. So I thought that putting the gate block at the end would be similar to using a noise gate pedal with an amp where it would be the last pedal in the chain. As long as I kept the guitar volume below 8 it worked great. But if I turned it up, it was just like I had no gate in the path at all. So then I moved it to the beginning of the signal path right after the looper. That took care of it for the most part. Now like so many of these demo presets that I make, I'm just using default settings. I could probably work with it for a while longer and tighten it up, but I like to show what you get with the default settings. I used the looper to record a riff with some open spots. I recorded it in the no gate scene so you can hear how noisy it is. Then I'll switch between the three different gate types.
Now, you don't have to be using a high gain preset to benefit from using a gate, especially if you're using a strat, you know, something with single coils or P90s. A well-placed gate can clean up noise, whether it's from bad wiring, bad lighting, or any other factors that I listed before. I mean, I've got recordings from some gigs where the Stratocaster just killed the mood of a slow song because there was so much noise from the lighting. Anyway, give the gate block a try and let me know how it goes for you. Now, I just got my P-Base back from the shop. It was in there for two months just waiting for a setup. So anyway, next Wednesday, I'll be taking a look at Austin Buddy's Bass Amps Tone Pack. Now, you don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, have a great weekend, and I will see you next week.